If you have a pension and you have the opportunity to take it as a lump sum or as a monthly income stream, which one is best? How do you make that decision? I've got that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. While it's true that fewer people are working in a pension-covered job, if you do have a pension or had one at a previous job, if it was in the private sector, so not not a government-related uh, job, then likely you have the option to draw that, that pension as a lump sum, roll it over to an IRA, or take it as a monthly income stream. Many of these companies are saying, we don't want the risk anymore. You, you take it. The, you know, the investing in bonds and, and managing you know, market volatility and, and interest income has not yielded what we expected. Here's your lump sum amount. You take it. And uh, oftentimes that is what people are deciding to do. And yet, what's right for you? What should you decide if you have that choice? Here's a recent scenario that I saw. Got a pension. I could draw it lump sum for $400,000. Roll it right over to my IRA and have a lot of flexibility with it. Or I could draw two grand a month for the rest of my life. Which one should I do? Which one's better? Well, lots to consider as you wade into figuring out what is the right decision for you. I've got five things at the very least that you need to consider. First, what is your life expectancy? And if you're married, what is your life expectancy and what's your spouse's life expectancy? Obviously, an extreme example is gonna illustrate why this is so important. If you decide, and guys, we've seen it, where, all right, I'm gonna take the monthly income, two grand a month for the rest of my life, and some in, in some tragic way, you have a very short retirement, you pass away recently after you retire. Obviously, it would have been better had you taken the lump sum. I've seen this also, I'm gonna get into this in, in the second kind of issue or, or factor that you need to consider. We're gonna draw this monthly income and it's gonna be based on um, both mine and, and my spouse's um, life expectancy, but then spouse passes away early in retirement. And now I'm receiving a smaller amount even though there's, there's no benefit for it. So what's your life expectancy? What's your health history? And while no one has a crystal ball and you can't, you can't see it, how could that and how should that inform, whether, inform this choice, whether you take it lump sum or as a monthly option? If you knew exactly your, you know, what your life expectancy was, you could build the perfect plan. You don't, we, we, we don't, but are there, you know, what's your health history? What's your, um, you know, is there longevity in your family? Those sorts of things. You have to factor that in as you make this decision. Second factor, I'm gonna phrase it like this. Okay, is it really two grand a month? Is it really two grand a month? When you are drawing your pension, normally you've got a handful of different choices as to how you draw that income out. There's going to be a spectrum, a, a, a list of, well, if you draw it this way, then here's the monthly amount, or you could draw it this way and the monthly amount is a little bit lower, or this way the monthly amount's even lower still, and so on. And that, those, those options based on, well, is the payment based on your life only? If it's just based on your life and we'll pay X amount for as long as you live, but as soon as you die, we stop paying, that's gonna be the largest amount. That's likely the two grand. But there's normally a survivorship option, which means, well, we'll pay this amount for as long as you live or at least 10 years. That's 10 year period certain, or at least 20 years. Or if you're married, we'll pay this amount out. Or if you pass away, we'll pay 50% out to your spouse for as long as they live or all the way down to kind of the, the, the spectrum, the highest level is we'll pay this amount on your life only, and if they give you the choice, and many of them do, we'll pay this, the lowest amount out for as long as you live and for as long as your spouse lives. And so normally, and this is just, I'm just ballparking here, but if it's two grand on your life only, many people do not select that because they realize, oh, this is a big financial decision, this is a big, potential financial asset and resource. If I happen to get cancer early in retirement and pass away, all of this money 
you know, would not be eligible to go to my spouse or to go to my kids. And therefore I want to have some assurances. And so therefore, instead of getting the two grand a month for their life only, they'll select something. It could be, and I'm just spitballing somewhere close to 1600 a month if uh, for as long as you live and as long as your spouse lives. So you get a reduction in your monthly benefit to have some assurances that it will still be there beyond your life. Well, you've got to factor that into your decision, especially because you're now comparing $1,600 a month compared to $400,000 and the flexibility that you'd have with rolling that over to your IRA. And going back to that first factor that you need to consider, that first characteristic of what's your life expectancy, We've seen folks where they decide, they have decided, well, I'm gonna draw a lesser amount so that if I pass away, it's gonna continue for as long as my spouse lives and their spouse passes away. They could have been drawing two grand, they're now drawing 1600 and they're actually not going to get a benefit from it at all because their spouse's life was unfortunately uh, way too short. And so there's risk in this decision and, and that's another factor obviously that you need to consider. Third thing you need to consider What's your overall retirement income plan? And what I mean by that is, how much income do you need in retirement to live the lifestyle that you're accustomed to, that fits in your overall financial life, won't deplete your assets too quickly, and, and what are those sources of income? Just saying a couple examples here, if you need, in order to live the lifestyle you're accustomed to, if you and your spouse, you need six grand a month of, of retirement income, and you've worked up until your full retirement age and you each have a, a, a great career and your social security is gonna be five grand, maybe you don't need this, this two grand a month pension. Maybe it would be better for you to take the 400,000 lump sum and have a lot more flexibility. Said differently, may, maybe you need seven grand a month and your social security is gonna be five and this perfectly fills a hole. We'll see, right? But what is your retirement income plan? And part of that, what sources of retirement income are going to keep up with and fight inflation? Oftentimes, pensions do not. That's one of the things that you'll want to consider sort of within this question. But, uh, but of, those retire of your retirement income strategy, what's your game plan for fighting inflation? Fourth thing to consider, what else do you have saved up for retirement? Uh, a, a different way of saying that is how liquid are you? We, right? If you have different needs in retirement where, oh, I want to buy a new vehicle and I just want to pay cash or it's not worth, um, you know, the, the interest rate's too high or I, we want to, you know, make this addition on the house, something like that. Do you have other resources? Do you have ample resources that you could draw from or is predominantly all of your resources tied up in this monthly income. So what are the other retirement resources that you have saved up? And then lastly, what's your retirement income tax picture? What's your tax picture gonna be in retirement? If you choose to draw this, this, this pension, instead of as a lump sum where you've got flexibility over when you draw and how much, if you take it as an income stream, is that gonna mean that more of your social security will be taxable where otherwise it wouldn't be? Does it mean that you're all of a sudden subject to, uh, to, to IRMA, Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, where you'll have to pay more for your Medicare Part B and Part D, where otherwise, if you drew it as a lump sum and had some flexibility, you wouldn't be subject to that? Does it push you into a higher tax bracket? What's your overall tax planning strategy? What's your tax picture in retirement? And how does that influence whether you should take your pension as a lump sum or as a monthly income stream. So those are a handful of the considerations that we'll need to go into, well, what should, you know, what's best in your situation? Guys, most often people do choose to take the lump sum. It offers much more flexibility, both to when they draw the income, both um, as well as the tax planning opportunities, gives them the opportunity to, to do Roth conversions if they're in a low tax picture, um, allows them to control how the money's invested to hopefully have it grow into a greater resource for them and their family out there in the future. But there isn't a one size fits all approach, even though on average, most people do roll it over into their IRA taking the lump sum. It all comes back to your comprehensive financial plan and your five factors to your retirement success, different than these five considerations. What age do you wanna retire and what's your life expectancy? What, is your, what are your spending levels in retirement and, and, and what, what's your expectation for inflation? What's that retirement income plan? That's one of the questions. What, it, what do you have already saved up for retirement and how much risk are you comfortable taking with your investments? Looking at those factors and how they all connect and are interrelated 
to determine your retirement success and then how this decision influences that success rate. Whether, yep, if we take it as a, as, a, uh, as a lump sum, our confidence rate for our retirement is at this level. If we take it as an income stream, our retirement confidence rate is at this level. Looking at that five-factor retirement plan can help you make a great decision, a wise decision, with whether you should take your pension as a lump sum or a monthly payment. Work with your certified financial planner on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. You can find us online, corhorn.com, that's Corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com, you can find us there as well, or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it, go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.